Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. What we find in the Beatitudes are nine attitudes that faithful followers need to display. Today we are going to focus on verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now what this verse tells us is we need an attitude of endurance. Now I have believed on, on so much as you long enough in this world to know that Whatever you do, you will be criticized. Even if you do nothing, you will be criticized. I don't know about you, but I would rather be criticized for doing the right thing than for doing the wrong thing. I would rather be persecuted for doing the right thing than doing the wrong thing. And I would rather be called a fool for following God than to be called a wise man for following the devil. Franklin Graham tells the following story. Sami Dagher has been working at the world-famous Punicia Hotel in Beirut before Lebanon's terrible civil war. And just before the war broke out, he left the hotel to plant a small church in one of the poorest area of the city. When he approached the hotel manager to inform him that he was resigning, the following dialogue occurred. God has called me to preach, Sami told the manager. I'm leaving the hotel. Leaving? You're a fool. You're crazy. A man in your position making good money and you quit? I live for something more important than money. I'm going to preach the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to give up this good position to preach for some God? You must be crazy. Now I tell you the right thing to do. You stay here and make money. Sami, I need you. No, I can stay no longer. I prayed and this is what I must do. Then the hotel manager grew angry and shouted, I curse you. One day, Sami dug her. You will come to the threshold of my door and you will beg for a crust of bread and I won't give it to you. I will let you starve. Do you hear my words? Not a crust. Quite some time later, during some of the heaviest fighting, Summer, Sami heard a knock at his door. It was late at night. So Sami told his wife and children to stay in bed. He answered the door himself, and when he opened the door, the hotel manager stood before him. I couldn't sleep, the man said. I wanted to see you, how you are doing and talk. Sami made coffee and they discussed the old days they enjoyed at the Punicia Hotel. And Sami sensed the man had come up for another reason, but the man wouldn't say. Finally, Sami said, my friend, it is late. Why have you come to me? Oh, nothing, Sami. I just wanted to talk of old times, you know. The man walked to the door and opened it. And as he stood in the doorway with his head hung low, he turned to Sami and said, I have no food. I have not eaten for two days. Do you have anything you could spare? Sami, of course, gave him something to eat. He is no fool who follows God, even if he is criticized. 
Now, in this Beatitude verse 10, Jesus is telling us that persecution will come. Therefore, we must have an attitude of endurance. The King James Version call it long-suffering. And some other translations speak of this quality as patience. Paul lists this attitude among the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now go ahead and circle the word long-suffering. Long-suffering means just that, suffering long. It is important to have this attitude, this quality at times of criticism. It is important to have this attitude at times of persecution. It is important to have this attitude at times of harassment. Here is a fact. If you are serious about following Christ, you will be criticized. If you are a faithful follower of Christ, you will be persecuted. If you practice what the Bible teaches, you will be harassed. Harassment will come. How you handle harassment matters. You have heard me say it before and let me say it again. God is more concerned with your character than he is with your comfort. Again, God is more concerned with your character than he is with your comfort. Now look at what Paul says to the Christians at Ephesus. How they are to live out their Christian faith. Ephesians 4, 1 to 3. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the band of peace. Now Jesus doesn't ponder whether or not you will be persecuted. He doesn't consider whether or not you will be criticized. He doesn't hustle over the fact that you will be harassed. If you are faithful to him, he knows you will. He says we must endure under pressure. We must endure under persecution. We must hold tight when harassed. Jesus says in Matthew 5, chapter 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When sticks and stones are being thrown at you, you need to stick it out. You need to endure. You need an attitude of endurance. And today, I want to give you four positive steps for handling harassment. The first step is recognize the source. Jot it down. You have your bulletin today. Sunday bulletin, there's an outline there and two lines there, two, word, two letters. Recognize the source. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against wickedness, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. God and Satan are enemies. God is the enemy of the devil. The devil does not want God to win. He will use any and every means to attack God. If your enemy can't get to you, he'll attack your children. He'll attack your family. He'll attack your friends. He'll attack anything you care about. Because he knows that if he hurts the one you love, he'll be hurting you. The devil, Satan, can't get God. So he does the next best thing. He attacks God's family. 
He attacks God's children. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He is at war with God. And if he cannot harass God, he'll attack God's family and also his church family, the Lord's New Testament church. When you are under attack, recognize the source. Step two, refuse to retaliate. Refuse to retaliate. In Romans chapter 12, we find Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live at peace with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Did you know that in the Bible, Jesus was accused of being a drunk? Did you know that he was accused of being a glutton? In other words, he was accused of being a party animal. Do you know that he refused to retaliate? He could have pointed out every sin of every accuser, but he didn't. He left room for God. And you know what that's called? It's called trust. It's called faith. He put his trust in God. He had faith that God would take care of the situation. When you are persecuted, when you are harassed, when people treat you mean because you are a Christian, you need to believe that God is big enough to take care of it someday. We need to trust and have faith that God is our protection, that He is our fortress, that He is our shield. That's why this verse says, Give place unto wrath. He is big enough and we need to trust Him. We need to have enough faith in God so that we don't repay evil for evil. We need to have enough faith in God that we don't need to avenge ourselves. I need to trust Him and you need to trust Him. Put your trust in God so that whatever comes your way, you know that He will handle it. Refuse to retaliate. Leave it for God to take care of. And the third step is handling harassment. Respond positively. Respond positively. A minute ago, we look at Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 19. And just a few verses later, the, the Bible says in Romans 12, 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. When evil attacks us, we are to respond with good. Is it normal for you to return good when someone is attacking you? Is it normal for you to bless a person who is cursing you? No, it's not normal for me either. But that is what the Bible tells us to do. Return good for evil. But let me say this. If you're always trying to get even, you will never get ahead. When someone starts teasing you, when someone starts taunting you, and you retaliate, you retaliate who is in control? They are, not you. They are pushing your buttons and you respond in a negative way and you become their puppet. They could be looking for a fight and you have played right into their game. How many of you have said to someone, you make me mad? Do you know what you are telling that person? You're telling them 
they have control of your emotions. And here is what Jesus tells us to do. Matthew 5.44 But I say unto you, love your enemies. Do good or bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Can you do that? No. No in your own flesh. Everybody of us will say no. But with God's help, it is a big yes. Amen? Is it easy? No. Unusual? Yes. Is it what God wants you to do? Yes. Is it what God expects you to do? Yes. And Jesus says, don't react. Respond in love. When people put you down, build them up. When people hustle you, be nice to them. How among you have done that? Perhaps you say, oh, I never can do that. But with God's grace, you can. And you will see the results if you do that. Brethren, in life, there are many things you cannot control. But you can control how you respond to evil. Respond with something that is good. Respond in love and God will smile on you. Step four. Rest in God's protection. Rest in God's protection. Psalm 37 says, verse 7 to 9, Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Prick not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Prick not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, it's an interesting fact that this psalm is written by David. And why do I say this? Because if you remember the story of David, it is a story of persecution and harassment. Do you remember what happened between King Saul and David? David, as you remember, killed a giant called Goliath. And the event impressed everyone in Israel. Everyone everywhere started singing the praises of David. Everyone except for King Saul. Saul got jealous. Saul got envious. And evil thoughts entered Saul's mind. Evil thoughts entered Saul's heart. Saul started looking at David as an enemy. As time passed, the envy and jealousy in Saul grew. In fact, it grew to the point where it became hatred. Saul was so jealous of David that he threw a spear at David and hoped to pin him to the wall. First Samuel chapter 18 verse 11 tells us, And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Now David had to run. David had to hide. And you talk about harassment. You talk about persecution. And David knew persecution. David knew harassment. And yet he could write in Psalms 37, 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Let me ask you today, where are you at today? Are you being persecuted? Are you being harassed? God knows it. He sees it. And He cares and He is concerned about how you handle harassment. God is more concerned about your character than He is about your comfort. You see, God is in the character building business. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to overcome evil 
with girls? How do you deal with harassment? When harassment comes, do you recognize the source? Do you refuse to retaliate? Do you respond in a positive way, a way that God would be pleased? Do you rest in the Lord and have faith in His protection? If you do, God smiles. Remember, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your words that we have heard today. Sometimes it's so difficult to grasp in our minds the things that we need to do in regarding persecution and harassment. In our human nature, we want to retaliate want to make revenge your word tells us the opposite for us it's difficult to follow but Lord we will not do it based on our own strength because you have given us Jesus you have the Holy Spirit in us that we could do this thing and your commandments are not burdensome. To love our enemies in our situation, it's difficult, but through your grace, we could do it. We could pray to those who despitefully use us and persecute us. We could do good things to those who hate us. Lord, thank you for Jesus because we could apply these principles in life. Your word tells us that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Everything, we surrender it to you. Help us, all oh God, to follow your commandments because we know we could obtain peace, rewards, and contentment in life. And joy that passeth understanding. I pray that as we sink in into our minds, as we renew it day by day through your word. And put it in our hearts and apply it in our hands. We could see that the Holy Spirit is working in us. We could see that the fruits of the Holy Spirit will bear in us. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, faith. Against us there is no law. Lord, help us to be closer to you because these fruits will bear into our life when we abide in you and remain in you. Lord, make our lives the way that you want us to be, to live a godly life in this world. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you, have, if you are here today and you haven't received Christ as your Savior, loving your enemies is a very difficult thing if you are 